Hello and welcome back to Where Are All My Friends. This week is with Patrick CC, and there are a lot of reasons why I am incredibly stoked on this episode. One, I felt like I haven't had a conversation this in-depth with somebody who has had so much success on YouTube and has really built themselves as a creator on YouTube. And it's, it's a lane that I pay attention to a whole lot, but I felt like he documented that journey so well. He had so much perspective and shared his story so incredibly well on that come up that it was just fascinating to me. So I really hope you like that. Another cool piece is him and I were worlds apart, yet in very similar lanes as we found a similar music scene at the same time. So there's a lot of, in his story, there's a lot of us connecting pieces and being blown away of where he was involved with these people, I was involved with these people, and I love when those things connect. I want to keep this intro short because he did introduce himself pretty well and we get right into it in the beginning. If you enjoy this episode and you want to help grow the show, a huge favor that you can do is just sharing it on social media and telling friends about it. That's been the whole way this podcast has grown. So I'm at Andrew underscore FTW. Patrick is at Patrick CCTV. If you want to go above and beyond, subscribe to the podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts if you haven't already, and leave a review if it's on Apple Podcasts. All right, let's get into it. Where are all my friends? Another week and another guest that I'm very excited about. This week is Patrick CC. And I'm stoked because I say this a lot, but I love talking to people who I vaguely know, people where I've seen what you're doing, where I've seen the lane, but I really don't know your story. And these conversations uh, typically have a lot of like very genuine, like, oh shit moments of learning things and connecting pieces. And I have a lot of fun with that. So thank you for joining me, my dude. Of course, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this will be fun for sure. Um, so what I like to do before we really get into thick of it is just really quickly for a listener who doesn't know who you are, just who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Patrick. I make videos essentially about hip hop, make YouTube videos. And, you know, I guess that's pretty much the, <laughs> the, yeah. the whole, the whole thing summarized is I'm just a guy who that. makes YouTube videos and most of them, 95% of them are about hip hop. I love the simply stated titles, right? Because obviously the whole episode will get into what you do, but right. it's so funny to try to put that into such a brief thing. But I yeah. do think that says it pretty well. It's like, oh, by the way, I'm a gardener, you know? Or yeah. Something like random, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> so then what I like to do is... My favorite thing with this podcast is finding the times and those moments where you really found your thing and like that come up story and you kind of hitting your stride as the creator that you are. I think that everybody that is any type of creative or entrepreneurial spirited person has those times where they have those moments or they start to connect pieces. And I'm obsessed with hearing about those because I think there's a common glue to that, yet it's always different. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I love that. So I don't know, take me back to those early days of maybe discovering the first bits of that, where you're from, what, what that picture looks like in the early days. Yeah, I think you're right. Like a lot of people, a lot, when you hear a lot of the come up stories, like there is some sort of like, um, there is some sort of like structure or thing that happens with everybody to get to the point where they become successful or whatever. But mine is uh i guess is a little bit unique it's a little weird so pretty much when i was in high school late late high school i would say i was always thinking about being sort of an entrepreneurial type dude but you know for the most part when i was in high school i was just kind of concerned with like going to parties and just doing like high schooler type stuff so yeah. <laughs> I think that most people can relate to me on there. It wasn't really until I was like, um, you know, 17, 18, getting closer to being out of high school where I started. Um, I think the first entrepreneurial thing I did was I used to sell tickets. I used to be a promoter. I used to sell tickets no to shows, but they were EDM shows. They weren't rap shows. Um, I always liked rap. What city was that in? Where did you grow up? In New Jersey. But... And I would do it all over Jersey, Philly, and New York City. So it wasn't just in Jersey, but I was I grew up there. Um, yeah. But 
it was for EDM shows. Uh, I was always a big fan of hip hop and it was always like, you know, dear, close to my heart. But actually during most of my high school years, I was heavily into like electronic music and the whole EDM scene. So basically I started going to shows as like a fan. Um, and then I would eventually met some guy and he was like, hey, you want to, you know, sell tickets and potentially make money doing this and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, why not? Why not give it a shot? So, um, you know, that was like the first entrepreneurial thing. And it just and it also happened to be along along with music, too. So it's kind of cool. That lasted for quite a while, actually. I kind of dipped into that thing. And I I think there was at least uh, one part of my life where I was like, wow, I'm I'm going to like be a promoter or I'm going to throw shows one day or I'm going to, no this is going to be my career. Like I thought that, not that I really ever did anything successful. I would just was like, I was enjoying it. And, you know, I was like, this could be a career path for me. Um, yeah, you're kind of learning the ropes, getting familiar right, with it. Right. Yeah. It's funny that you say that too. I've had a couple guests on the show from the Jersey area that just become remarkably good at like that show promotion hustle. That's funny. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that East Coast thing is, especially in that area. But there's a there's just a grit of working hard out of there. It's funny. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of there's just a lot of shows. People like to be entertained. Um, I don't know. It's yeah. super popular too when like. I'm sure a lot of your guests are around my age. So I think it was really popular around my uh, age group. Um, yeah. But also while I was doing that, I, I started making music. Once I got out of high school, I was at community college. And, you know, I went over to my friend's house one day and he had downloaded FL Studio. And I had never really ever thought about making music prior to that. Never had an itch. But I saw him doing it and I was like, man, it looks interesting like it was just like i was like could you throw it on my laptop you know totally legally downloaded of course and bought of course you, of course did you start making music if you didn't have an fl rip <laughs> yeah like, come on now <laughs> yeah exactly so he put it on my laptop and then i just was like all right i'm gonna just try to make music now like why not you know i was single i was going to community college a lot of my friends had moved and i didn't really have anything to do and I don't even remember what job I had or even if I did have a job. So I was like, this is the perfect time to like pick up a hobby. And uh, yeah, yeah, that that was my first like introduction to the to the creative process behind music. And I made mostly like heavy trap and dubstep, um, a lot of bass heavy music. And that was pretty much all I did for like two years was just no shit. I went to school. Community college is very, you know, regular. It's just like high school, yeah. too. So I went to school. I came home and I made music and I, you know, I I was also working on like promoting those shows and stuff. So I was like, you know, selling tickets and then I would go to those shows and then I would make music in my free time. And once I started to get better, I started, well, maybe I could perform these shows. And I kind of was combining the two things, which is like what a lot of people did at that point is like a lot of these DJs or upcoming DJs or upcoming producers would be like also selling tickets and getting into the business behind it to try to figure out, you know, where they can kind of find their angle and get in on that action. But that was my first, that was sort of like my journey from high school into, um, into like the music world, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. I didn't know that you made music ever at all. That's that's crazy. Did you have any amount of success at it in that lane? Yeah, I mean, I guess like the the difference between the underground EDM scene. Well, there's a there's there's a lot of similarities, but also big differences in the underground EDM scene and the underground rap scene. So like it's way harder to get a fan base. It's way harder to get streams. But the streams that you do get are a lot more meaningful. It's way easier to get to become like a part of the community and be a part of like the group of artists, I guess, that are like popping, so to speak. Like basically what I'm saying is it if you're good, it doesn't take that much to stand out. But the overall level of success is significantly lower than like the underground rap scene. And it's way harder to make like a career. Right. So I had I think I amassed like 2000 followers um, on SoundCloud, which was a lot for. for yeah, that's like, not nothing like that was that was a that was a considerable amount for like the underground EDM scene, I would say, especially for like 
a niche version of the EDM scene, which was like dubstep. So yeah, I, what was your artist name? Shank, S H A N K. And all my music is it still around? Yeah, it's still up there. I think no my, shit. I think the last song I ever put up there was like four years old now. But damn. But yeah, no, I um I DJed a couple of shows. I you know had had some songs that got some pretty cool plays. I got some recognition from some bigger artists, but nothing crazy. But I will say that like when I guess I quit or I stopped making music at like kind of the height of it or or when I was like at my best or when I got the best at producing was when I stopped. Well, I mean, that makes sense though, right? Like if you're continuously working on something, you're going to progress and get better and better. And then eventually you're going to hit a spot where you either keep doing it or you don't. So. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I guess you get, yeah, you're not going to, well, I guess you could start getting worse and then be like, all right, yeah. I'm done. But yeah, yeah for the you most could just part. like get out of touch and yeah. like start dropping a bunch of stuff people don't care about. Right. But yeah. Um, okay. So that's, that's wild. I had no idea. So then there's a very obvious, huge pivot where you go from being an ent- a totally different genre mm-hmm. and making music, like you're still promoting shows, but pretty outside of hip hop. Yeah. So then where does that switch? Where do you start taking notice? Where do you start thinking about doing, was it, did it straight up start with YouTube or what is that switch? So basically I was, I, le- I was leaving community college. I, I went to Rutgers University, which is like a bigger university. I transferred schools. I was in a new relationship and I was kind of overwhelmed with a lot of the things that were going on in my life and didn't really have enough time to make music. Also was not really liking the community that I was a part of and also just not really enjoying in general, just the whole process of like what was going on. I also didn't think my music was that good. Like I was that guy that was like, oh, my music is bad. And like the more you tell yourself that, like you will eventually start to believe it. And I think kind of a lot of those things came together and I got to a point right where somebody had given me some advice and they were like, you're either going to quit or you're going to keep doing it, but you can't do it. You can't be in the middle because when you're in the middle, you're not you're not helping yourself at all. So once somebody had specifically said that to me, because I was like contemplating what I should do for months. And eventually I just officially like told myself, like, I'm done with this. I'm not doing this anymore. Like I'm done, which is a really weird thing that a lot of people don't get to that point. Like a lot of people will not specifically like say or tell themselves like I'm done with this. Right. So, but I did. And after I did that with this girl that I was with, we decided to start a YouTube channel just like anybody else. The reason you start a YouTube channel is because you think you're interesting and you think other people will like it. (laughs) That's how you start a YouTube channel. I just want to say what you just said there in that last minute is so profoundly powerful and it's so real. All of that, like that really had like for a second, I was just like, holy shit, because I do think that whoever gave you that advice, like props to them yeah because that is so massively valuable shout out to am trap he's current american trappist he's a current he's a recording artist he still makes music he gave me that advice over dinner one time this is this i'll just quickly go exactly what he said he's like yeah he's like your situation right now is like you have a dying plant in your room you wake up every day you look at that plant you know that it's dying you're either gonna water it or you're gonna get rid of it but you're not going to yeah. like just sit there and look at it every day. You need to do something about it. You need to water it or you need to get rid of the plant. And I was like, wow, yeah, that's interesting. Because just looking at it every day is not helping you. If anything, it's just going to make you more and more depressed, yeah. right? Like, you know, you're not doing something about it. You know that it's withering away. Mm-hmm. So it's like either end the cycle or do everything you can to bring it back to life. Right. Right. That's, dude, that's like really huge. And I've definitely felt that in my life, in my career. I think a lot of people can relate to that. And I I hope that, I hope that resonates with anybody listening because I I could not agree with that more. Um, So then, okay, so you decide to ditch the plant. You decide to get into YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I I also think that what you said with that is powerful. It's like, we all kind of have that feeling, maybe not everybody, but I know that feeling of, oh yeah, I think I'm interesting. And then it's like, can you translate that? And I, you know, obviously after years and perfecting it and the story that led you up, I think you very much have, but please tell me about that early time. 
Yeah, and that's that's kind of a it's kind of a uh, it's a point that I'll probably allude to later on in this conversation. But yeah, starting out with starting out with I think I'm interesting or I think my voice matters. Right? I'll mention yeah. something about that later if we can remember Please, to go, yeah. go back on that. But basically, me and this girl who I'm no longer with, just you know, we were like, let's try to start a YouTube channel, and we just kind of did like regular you know we bought like a cheap camera didn't have that much money i bought like a hundred dollar camera or something i i edited on sony vegas which was another program that i definitely purchased (laughs) and i just came up with i don't know the videos weren't that original they were like these vlogs or challenges or like typical kind of corny like you know uh, boyfriend girlfriend like youtuber like thing. the youtube starter pack yeah of, like, like the videos YouTube that you couple see. stuff yeah so i was like all right i guess we can do that and we just kind of dove into it didn't really think about it too much you know i was i was i was going to Rutgers at this time and i spent all of my free time just editing videos and getting obsessed with video editing i thought it was so cool and it was easy for me to jump into because i had spent so much time in fl studio so i kind of worked with a daw a digital audio workstation so i had I was familiar with like a computer program and video editing wasn't that different. Like, so it was easy for me to like learn things and it wasn't like this whole, I mean, it was totally different, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't totally foreign, right? It's like going from- Yeah, like following a linear path. It's like algebra to to pre-calc or something. It's like, they're kind of related in some sense or math and chemistry, how there's a lot of math and chemistry. Yeah, like, you I, can like, you still cut pieces. Right, it's, it right. It feels similar. Right, so yeah. I think that it was fun. That made it fun because it was like, well, I did still, part of me still loved music, right? So this was kind of like a new uh, take on it um, in a way. So we started making videos and she was like kind of like a popular girl. So like a lot of her friends would watch them and stuff, but it, it wasn't really um, like, it was kind of just her friends. Like I didn't really like, I didn't even funny, funny thing actually too, is at this point I didn't even use social media anymore. Once I was done making music, I was like, I don't, I don't care about Twitter and Instagram and stuff. And it's, Weird that I say that because of my job now, but actually, if I didn't do my job, I probably wouldn't have social media. Like, I'm not the type of guy that would be interested in what other people are doing, per se, um, just because, like, it caused me a lot of stress. It was just like, I don't know. It just felt like I was always glued to my phone and it was distracting and stuff like that. And I actually didn't have social media pages or I had them, but I just didn't use them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can relate to that. I, I mean, feel you on I that. used YouTube. I liked watching YouTube videos, but I I wasn't just using them for personal reasons, basically. Yeah, I always think about something on that line of just like creating versus consuming. And right. when you're an artist or when you're making something, when you have any project that you believe in, when you're on social media, you're creating. Mm-hmm. You're adding a story or a narrative to another part of it. You're creating the the image of you as an artist or whatever. Right. Um, versus being somebody that isn't making something, it feels like you're just always consuming. Like right. you're always just watching other people do stuff yeah. or like whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, and it can be stressful. It's a weird or, vacuum. Or weird, yeah. And yeah. I think that uh, it was still exciting to me. Like uh, everybody wants to be like an influencer. Like everybody kind of, um, what's the word? Uh, fantasizes, I guess, about that or thinks that they could be that. So I was definitely interested in that. So we started making videos and we did it for, I don't know, six months or so. And I got really good at editing and I, well, not compared to what I'm, what I'm now, but I would say that in a short period of time, I got pretty good and started to understand like more about YouTube. And then, um, I didn't, I didn't really like the way long story short, like, I guess it's more of a complicated story because it also was like a relationship thing. But like, basically, I, I wasn't loving the content that we were putting out. And I, yeah. I was putting in a lot of work. So I was just like, I want to make my own stuff. You know, eventually, that's what I did. And in between the end of this channel, which doesn't exist anymore, and Patrick CC, I would make these and this was in fall of 2017. It was my last year of college, the beginning of my last year of college, I made these one minute Instagram videos every single day for 90 days and I didn't miss a day. So I I got the idea from Gary V uh, because I was a big 
Gary V fan, and I was Shouts like, "Shouts to the guy, yeah, man. He's a little over the top, but I I really support his yeah, general message. Yeah, and I was kind of going through a lot of like, you know, this feeling of like being lost because I like, you know, spend all this time on music, and then I spent all this time on this YouTube channel that I didn't love anymore, and now I have a lot of skills, but I don't have anything that I'm passionate about, and I'm going into my last year of college, and. I was like, I don't know what I like. I don't even know what I, who I am or what I want to do. And then, you know, I kind of turned, I, that's when I got hooked on Gary V and he had said something one day, he was like, Instagram is going to be the new YouTube and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And one day I was just in the shower and I was like, I'm going to just do it. I'm not even going to think about it. And yes. at this point, uh, my my girlfriend at the time moved to Florida and I was in New Jersey. So I had no distractions, no excuses. So I just told my friend, I was like, yo, dude, I'm going to make a one minute Instagram video every single day and not like, that's it. And he was yeah. like, all right. And I was like, come over. I want to do this today. And I did. And I did it for 90 days straight and didn't miss a day. And uh, what were the videos of? It was like random, like some, a lot of the stuff was I don't know. It was just like weird little creative things that I th was just thinking of at the time. And I guess some of it could have been deemed as political. Some of it could have been deemed as entertainment. Some of it could just be totally random. There were some like vlogs. And also at the time I started reselling vintage clothing because that was like the entrepreneur um, in me too. Like yeah. I was always doing something like that one, yeah. that period of time when I wasn't doing anything, I would just be going crazy. Like I would feel yeah. either in a dark place or I would just be you know, anxiety ridden or something like I just needed something to occupy my time. I've always needed that probably because I don't do drugs or drink. <laughs> same, yeah. same. And I feel you. I, I don't think that it's like just an us thing either. I think a lot of people yeah. listening to this, like if you're taking the time to listen to this podcast, you've probably felt it because it's, yeah. I don't know what it is, but I hate idle time. And I just always feel like there's something that can be done yeah. or you can be progressing. So the way that you just explained that, I'm like, dude, I, I spiritually relate to that. Yeah, I think like I just I always needed to be doing something for my own mental health and for my own like just for me. And uh, that just would lead to, you know, creative ideas and and different endeavors. So I was going into my last year of college, starting to do these videos and then also like, all right, I'm going to I started to just enjoy vintage clothing. I just. I don't know. Yeah. My friend would go to the thrift store and I was just like, I don't know. I kind of like this. So why don't I give it a try? And then I was like, now I can use this for content too. Like I could do some thrifting videos or something. And I yeah, set up. That a, was really popular for yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. I set up a, a, a an Instagram account and would try to sell vintage clothing. And I think like I ended up uh grossing like a thousand dollars in sales, but it was, I spent like, you know, $700 in total. So it was like, it wasn't successful by any means, but I was enjoying it and it kept me occupied. And like, I didn't it really like school, that you know, I didn't like yeah. school and school didn't make me feel fulfilled. So, you know, this did. And um, then, you know, uh, but then it, it stopped, you know, I stopped making those videos um, because after a while I was like, it it wasn't leading to anything. It didn't really felt like I was learning any new editing skills. It didn't really feel like I was challenging myself enough. Like for a while yeah. it was, but then it, then it wasn't, you know what I mean? And, um, how was the channel growth? Did you, well, I did it on Instagram. There? So I, oh. I probably only gained like 150 followers, like over the course of 90 days. So kind of like, at least for me, like my feeling of that is like that always hustling, always working on something. You have like an internal compass that's like, this is it or this is not it. Like you can feel if it's yeah. a wave and you're like, ah, this is too much time in for too little return. Exactly. There's yeah. a better way to do this. Exactly. Yeah. You, you yeah. think like, I think either as an entrepreneur or just somebody like with some sense, you figure out, okay, how much time do I have? How much time am I spending on it? How much do I love it? And how much is it working? And then you kind of do all of those things in your head and then you realize, okay, either keep doing it, change it or stop. And I think I got better from the time that I had quit music. I was like, okay, like I'm done with this. It's not working. I don't love it. I don't, I didn't love it that much. I think that's really what it comes down to. But then the problem is, that was that was on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, I posted that last one of that year of 2017. Yeah. But the problem is now I'm 
again. Now I'm entering, now I'm in winter break. Uh, I'm still in that relationship. We had been doing it long distance, which is a whole other beast, you know? And then I'm entering my last semester of college and I'm at square one again. So nothing, nothing again. So it was a really, really dark time for me. And it's harder every time that you give up on one. It's like, at least for myself, that inner voice of like, am I a failure? Am I just trying and never going to figure this out? Mm-hmm. And it's like, when you kind of have that initial first success, you're like, I'm the fucking shit. What up? Right, like, and right. you're just good. Like when you start it, you're like, this is going to work. And then yeah, after a while. And then every time you cancel and every time you go back to the drawing board, there's that back of your head thing of like, I fucked the last one up. Yeah. It didn't get right. right. So I feel you. Dude. Yeah. And at, the, at those points too, at that point, I was like, I had also started flirting with the idea of going back into music because that was something that I knew that I could, uh-huh. you know what I mean? That's that. Yeah. Like you had had some success. Right. So that was just like you said, going on that, like you start to go back to the drawing board and you're like, Oh, well, you know, maybe I try that again. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe that'll work. So I didn't end up doing that. Um, but all of that, that feeling of being in a dark place and everything is leading up to maybe what you can predict was, um, you know, getting in touch with, with emo rap. Um, this was Mm -hmm. when, you know, Lil Peep had just passed and I was vaguely Uh. familiar with him, but he was still like a hot topic, you know, like he had passed like a month or so before, but he was a hot topic and people were talking about it. And then I kind of like just got interested in his story and I was like, wow, you know, so I, I, I had known who he was very vaguely Cause yeah. all this while too, I had lightly been in touch with with underground rap, but definitely still in touch with mainstream rap, right? But I think that that's just a level of culture, right? Like, right? Clearly, like I like was very on familiar Instagram. with X because he was yeah. he was huge in the EDM scene as well. So you know, you eventually come across like Suicide Boys and Peep, all yeah. of that, like kind of if if you're. Yeah, if you're on SoundCloud, mm-hmm. YouTube, Instagram, vintage clothes shopping, like there's yes. an underlying like wave of things that you're at you're least seeing. It. It's to. at least coming up on your screen. Yeah, and um, I had I had gotten into Peep, but I was you know being like like we said, being uh, being a creator that wasn't uh, recognized and being into the SoundCloud scene and being an underground artist previously, I was always more attracted to underground so i was like i want to find artists like lil peep right and that's Uh where i Uh came across the convolks the gucci highwaters the shinigamis of the world and this was right at the time where i had started the patrick cc youtube channel so like i was in that dark place i started listening to that music and then I was like, I need to create again. And I know I've always wanted to start my YouTube channel. So I'm going to do it now. This is my last semester of college. Uh, I don't know what I want to do, but I want to start this YouTube channel. And I'm just going to figure it out. Like, that's it. I didn't even have a plan. I was like, I'm just going to figure it out. I know I like music. I know I like this. I know I like these creators. I'm going to try to mimic what they're doing a little bit. And then I'm just going to dive head in. And I really didn't even have a plan. And then one day it just kind of clicked and I I had been listening to Convolk and um, Gucci Highwaters a lot. And then I was like, well, why don't I just make a video about this? Because like it's it's I like doing this. And it was it's funny because it was actually in the shower again when I had thought about that. I was like, I should just make a video about it. Like, why not just talk about some of the artists? I didn't look up a similar video. I didn't look up anything for inspiration. I was like, I'm gonna just make a little list of like artists that I like. And then that was like the video that's still up today. Oh my God. Because that makes sense. Because you have, you've done it before with your girlfriend on that previous channel. Mm -hmm. Like you knew the YouTube formula Mm -hmm. or you knew at least like some kind of that. You had done 90 days of Instagram videos where you weren't thinking about it. You were just going in and talking. You knew the editing skills. So like- I get those pieces coming together where you're like, okay, cool. I love this music. Like, fuck it. Right. I'll talk about it. Right. Right. So it was very much like every, it's, it's funny cause it's hard for me to like summarize the whole story because all these little pieces did come together to, you know, make me, me and make this whole situation, you know, uh, come together. And, you know, me being in like a dark place and stuff is like an important part of the story, you know, cause why else would you listen to like a lot of like depressing emotional rap? 
Yeah. And, you know, that's that's really what happened. And then, you know, that that is like the whole build up story to like the beginning of Patrick CC and making videos about music. Because wow. before I made that video about those artists, I think I only put out like four or five videos and like they were just kind of like random. Right. I mean, like we could Dude, go that, into them, but like for the no, story's no, it's sake, fine. It's like, yeah. it, it's fine. Like I just I think that like again, I'm so glad we're having this conversation because all too often I'm I do this. I definitely find myself guilty of this, but I think that a lot of people will look at something, not really do the homework, and just be like, oh, must be nice, must be nice to get lucky to like strike gold. And it's like, nah, you put years in of trying so many things, knowing that there was a spark, knowing you had it, Mm -hmm. but not having it translate. And I think everybody has that story. And then even to that point, that was two years ago. And that was just the beginning of the channel. Mm -hmm. Like if you look back to that now, like what your early videos was probably just enough views and just enough momentum to be like, all right, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you exactly what was the momentum to keep going. But please, um, the momentum to keep going was after I had made that video, I was like, OK, I know because I had saw that these guys I saw like Gucci High Waters and Convolk and I saw that they had like a little bit of followers. And then I knew that there was a community like uh, or I knew that I knew that people liked music and I knew that people liked YouTube. And I knew that there was eventually going to be something that I had to do to get more viewers So I was like, this is probably my best chance because people like music. If they don't like YouTube, they they like music. So maybe if I can just try to promote music in a weird way, it also kind of benefits me, right? So I made this little promotion thing for an Instagram story, like a a Photoshop thing. And um, I paid a Lil Peep fan account to promote it. I think it was like $10 to post it on my sto- post it on their story. And um I, I got like a thousand views. And I had Whoa. a thousand views on the video, which was crazy because I had like 50 subscribers. And Convolk saw the video and he had DM'd me about it. And he was like, he said something like, um He said, you know, thank you or something, or he just put like a heart emoji. And I said, never stop making music. And he said to me, never stop making YouTube videos. Um, That was our that was our first interaction with each other, actually, in Instagram DM. And then holy um, shit. And then I went into hustler mode. And then I was like, wait a minute. He saw this and I believe he was my favorite one. Um, Yeah. So I just really loved his music. So I was like, "Ah, I just want to be friends with him. He had a thousand followers on Instagram. Um, <laughs> which I thought was crazy too, because I had like 150. So I thought that was insane. I thought a thousand was like, whoa. So yeah. the fact that he was even DMing me was like crazy. So I asked him, and this goes back to the vintage clothing. I said, I noticed that he he wore a lot of polo sport and Tommy Hilfiger and old vintage stuff. So I was like, yo, I sell vintage clothing. Can I give you some? And, you know, I was thinking like, Maybe he'll tag like the business because I had been still loosely selling vintage clothing. I was like, maybe yeah, he'll tag yeah. the and business you know, and I can start making. Gary V's in there, yeah, you know the right. Yeah. So I was like, maybe I could start, ma- you know, make a quick buck um, or something like that. Right? I wasn't thinking yeah, about like, YouTube. It's almost th- like you don't fully know the map, no. but you're like, there's something here. Yeah, I was Ask. like, there's something yeah. here, and he was like, definitely. And then, you know, I don't know if it was that day or if it was a couple days later or something. He was like, yo. Uh, I'm going to be in New York City. We should link up and hang out. And I was like, shit, all right, cool. Like, I haven't been to the city in a long time. Like, at this point, I only have, like, two months until I graduate. What the fuck else am I doing? You know what I mean? Like, let's let's go for it. And yeah. um, I filmed that first day that we hung out, and it's on my channel. And, you know, that's when a, a real friendship started as, we- as well as – uh evidently would be a a good opportunity for for me for both of us actually but it started out as yeah me trying to figure out how that this this was this was a moment but then what happened was when we hung out we actually just became really good friends that's 
you know. That's really cool. And that was in March of 2018, so just over two years ago. And I think that's also, I love that, because he joined us on the West Coast version three tour. And I think that, like, he's such a kind, cool dude, but he can also be misunderstood because he has, like, a very direct, brash way to just, like, kind of fuck with you. Like, he's almost too smart for his own good. So he'll, like, troll you before you even know that he knows about you. Yeah, he's very So the fact that you guys did get along so quickly. I think it's because I always understood his humor. I thought it was very similar to mine at the time. Um... I don't know. We just, we just clicked. Yeah. I just, I just got it. We just had fun. We just, um, I don't know. We just became good friends and it was genuine. It was just genuine. That's really what it was because I think we both, it's also like, unfortunately, the bigger you get, you know, the, it is harder to trust people and you wonder people's intentions and stuff. And we were just two people like hoping both broke, yeah. both not thinking yeah, about any, fuck. both not really thinking any of this is going to work. We're just like, I don't know, just like trying, you know what I mean? Dude, I, I know that that feeling is honestly magical and like getting yeah. somebody because like he works really hard. Yeah. Like he he is a grinding dude, always working. So the fact that you guys met so early, I'm sure that you had so many conversations of just like, what if what can we do? What if mm-hmm. there's something here, but how does it connect? Like, right. I like you painted that picture so well, and that's so cool to hear that that was the fuel that kept it going like that's so just genuine yeah yeah well eventually you know we obviously kept hanging out we actually hung out a lot more than what happened was and i kind of regret this a little bit but but also not because you know he's a friend of mine but we started hanging out more and i wouldn't film as much because we just were friends so like yeah we spent a lot of time together and then didn't i didn't film a lot of it but i filmed that first time you know? Yeah. Which was cool. But looking back on it, I'm like, man, I wish I filmed more just so we could really look back on it. But at that point, I was like, this guy is just my friend that I believe in. And we had filmed a lot. But like I said, there was a lot more. And um, he basically at some point, I don't remember exactly when, was like, look, dude, you have something here. And you could be really big, but you need to focus on just music. Uh, and I had already been flirting with the idea because I was doing different types of videos and stuff. And he would, and the music ones were the only ones that were really doing that many views, like doing any views. They would do a couple hundred, but the other ones yeah. wouldn't like really do any views. So um, he was like, dude, you got to focus on music. And actually that point, there was other two major things. One, I, we, I ended that relationship. Well, I didn't, but that relationship ended with my girlfriend at the time. So I was newly single and I had just graduated college. So I had nothing holding me back. There was no excuses. It was time. So it was, I met Convolk. I broke, uh, we broke up and you know, I graduated. It was time. It was time to go full force. It's the perfect storm. And then that's when I started. That was May. That was two years ago. Just, well, I guess it's June now. That was two years ago. Just, just, it was the end of May too. So I'll, I'll confidently say it was like exactly two years ago where I started uploading once a week. I said, I will not miss a week of uploads ever after this day. And, um, you know, I never did after that. Dude, that again is one of those on music. moments. That's amazing. And it, uh, that's like, that moment gives me chills because I think that that is the perfect storm of all of those things are easy advice, but it doesn't hit the right way until you experience it. Like you knew what it was like to have that vision and have it not quite be translated or or pop off. And then you're out of college, you're out of a relationship, you have a new friend gassing you up, you know you have talent, but you know it's not discovered. And then it's like, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I need to do exactly what I'm, I need to choose a lane and get really fucking good at it and stay really consistent. And yeah. I don't, I even think that even if you do that, sometimes it won't pop. Right. But the more and more I look at it, the more I obsess over it, I feel like that is, I don't think that there's a successful person that hasn't had that theme. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah. I just, I mean, obviously the story is deeper Then you also have to be good at what you do. And there's those always yes. that 
thing. And yeah, ultimately it's having the ability to recognize that you are in a position or you're in a moment and being able to be like, wait, I have something here or something's going on and I have the ability to either capitalize on it or it'll, it means something. And that's a really tough moment. You know, I realized it, but it took him being like, yo, stupid, like only focus on music. What are you doing? Like, it's the reason why we're here. And also that you do that the best and you know that, you know, it's almost like somebody just pointing out the obvious. And then I was like, yeah, you're right. I need to, I need to just focus on that. And then it was Dude. just like, that's all it was consistent. It was just, that was it. A note that I had on this episode there's a book that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I reference it a decent amount, but it's called Good to Great by a dude, Jim Collins. Older book, and it's him focusing on like 10 specific companies and why they went from being good regular companies to incredible companies. One of the examples he uses is Walgreens, right? And he compares them to like Eckerd's at the time. And it's like, what made them, the other ones were good, they became great and they lasted. And he talks about something called the hedgehog concept. And that is the three things of it are what are you deeply passionate about? What can you be the best at? And what drives your economic engine? And I was so curious to hear that from you. And I think you just explained like in that conversation with Convolk, it's like you were deeply passionate about music already. Mm -hmm. That was organic. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't you trying That's hard. It was just life. you attached to that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You can't fake that. Right. But then what can you be the best at? And those skills were coming together where it feels like that was starting to kind of like glimmer to you of like, wait a minute, I already know this editing thing. I'm only getting better at it. Him kind of nudging you to be like, dude, you're great at this anyway. Right. So what's that last piece? And like, where was there a time where you hit a stride financially or like, was there a time? I guess it's a two part question of like the last part of the hedgehog concept is what drives your economic engine. And then also in that, like, how did that look? Like, was there months or years of it being like, I feel like there's traction, but there's not money? Or was there another sign of just like, this is it? I think the economic engine in this, in my situation, is not necessarily money, but views. Views on YouTube. Okay. Okay. And, you know, because eventually views do lead to money. Um, and it was just the simple fact is like, anytime I made a video about music, more people watched it. I had more views. And anytime I didn't, it got less views. And when you're a small YouTuber, do the thing that gets you the most views. <laughs> like, do the thing that gets you the most views with YouTube. With music, my advice would be a little bit different. However, with YouTube, it's do the thing that gets you the most views. <laughs> Obviously, within reason. You know, sure. don't, you yeah. know, just be saying crazy stuff and, you know, trying to get a reaction out of people. But generally speaking, I think most people understand what I'm saying there. Do the thing that is working. And yeah. that is the part of the, the economic engine right there that I think was that third piece of the puzzle is like, not only are your, vi are your videos like they are, you love music, your videos are objectively so much better when you talk or subjectively so much better when you make music or when you, when you talk about music, because it's just like, you can kind of feel this different energy and you know, you know what you're talking about and they're yeah. just better, you know? And then the third thing is like, it's, it also does the, it's, you know, it does the most views. So what yeah. other sign do you need, you know, to, that's it. what, uh, what else do you need, you know? And, you know, that was, that was it. And also like a longest time he had been introducing me to, to people. Like I had been going to New York city and, and we had been going consistently and we met new artists. I met, you know, Tommy ice and Kevin Kazi and Savage gasp and, uh, Garden and Shinigami and Super Chef M and all of them, all of them in this summer of 2018, and dude. nobody had a following. Nobody. Well, dude. I mean, not nobody. Some people did. Had a. It was bit, just so much smaller. Yeah. That's and this is again why I cannot freaking believe that we have not hung out and crossed paths because I was starting version three pretty much like that time and like the version three tour started at the end of 2018. I was meeting all of them and that was led to me, I guess where you found Lil Peep first, I found Nothing Nowhere first. And then from there found Family Pet and started working with them, met 93 through Family Pet and then met Shinny through them Shinny led me to me, FM, 
and then Gasper, but it's just so funny. And then Nick Garden. So it's so funny that like we had that same circle yeah. and it was just like this, like never quite connected. Well, thing. I had, I've never, I've never, um, I've never really been that close with, with family pet. I mean, I, I know Mitch, but, and also I've never met 93 and really I talked to him. Oh. I talked to him for the first time actually recently, like just a couple of months ago. Um, so I think that's why. Pretty much. Interesting. Like you yeah. We're friends with the them. The closer friends and I were wasn't. the further ones. Exactly. Wow. But again, like, I think that there is something really special about, uh, you know, I think music is so much bigger than just that little underground scene. Yeah. But yeah, I absolutely. definitely attribute a lot of, like, the passion and uh, guiding path to finding that little underground scene and being any part of that at that time and that era and watching them all grow. Because mm -hmm. like you said, I mean, I can't believe that you met Convolk get like, a thousand followers. Yeah. But, all of those guys, like there was, there was signs, there was traction for sure. You could see there was interest and quick growth, but it wasn't anything. It was no. just everybody figuring it out. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah. It wasn't anything. And now it's like, now I have a hard time like really seeing some, something else that's like that. I know. I oftentimes wonder that, like, will there be another evolution or wave to that scene or will it be I don't something know about entirely that. different. I don't know about that scene. The only thing, the only thing that I do see that's similar to that recently is uh, is a group out of Atlanta, uh, a group of artists out of Atlanta that are all very close and work together. They're not an official group, but they're all friends and they all make music together and they're all really talented and really good. Um, they don't make emo rap or whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's not in the right. alternative scene. I would just, I would just. It's I would energy. just plainly call it hip hop, you know. Yeah. And um, what are they called? The four like main artists. Uh, like I said, they're not an official group. They're all just friends. But Kenny Mason, Jelani Imani, da David the Tragic, and Jazz Ingram. Those okay. four guys are incredible, and they have like that uh, organic, yeah. um, sort of friendship following. Yep. Anyone who follows one of them, you know all of them. You know what I mean. Yep type yeah. shit and i see it with them too and i think that they're going to be something very special in a few years but um but besides that i haven't really seen like a, a thing that i experienced yeah and i don't know about you but i think you have to have known the contrasting feelings because you made music before in a different genre but my world my roots were maybe a little bit more old school of like the old like pop punk warp tour days but I've seen other music scenes and what I don't think is rad is the cool kids club of high school clicky. We're cooler than you. We're not going to support you. Like, I don't think things grow like that. No. And when you see friends supporting friends and like the early days of like you with Convoke mm -hmm. and just all of that scene, everybody was helping each other. Everybody yep. was jumping on tracks. It was fun. It wasn't serious. It wasn't competitive. Everybody obviously wanted to succeed, right. but it was really like, it felt like community. And yeah. I fuck with that so heavy. And I think that so much success can happen for so many people. So that energy is something that I can always kind of see and feel and get real excited about. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you got to work together. That's all you got. I mean, you can make an argument like I wouldn't be where I was without Convolk, you know? Like if I didn't come across that, you know, I think I always had something, but maybe it took me meeting him to for it to come out of me. And, yeah, you know, and then you could say that with just a lot of the a lot of the people that I met, you know, it the help from each other, boosting each other up and stuff is like it was almost like this whole a lot of things that came together. It wasn't just, you know, I made videos and I made them long enough so that eventually people caught on to them like it was a bunch of things and. Yeah, that community, that working together, because there are very few people that can really do it on their own. There's very few. I'll say that. Very few. I could not agree with that more. Something I want to call back. You said the thing in the very beginning of when you first started trying making YouTube videos, the I think I'm interesting thing, and you said that well, that would come back. Actually, I didn't know how far. We actually didn't get to the point. Where oh, I could shit. call that Let's back. go. Well, I just, I don't know how far we're, because we're still kind of in the origin story still. Like, at this point, where we where I'm talking about right now, I only had like 500 subscribers. 
Like when I was oh, fuck. when I was meeting like Gasp and Convolk and Shinigami and all of them, I I didn't hit a thousand subscribers until like I didn't even meet Garden yet. Like we're not even at that point. You know what oh, I mean? Oh fuck. Oh my goodness. And well, we're damn, 50 minutes we in. To, so I know. All right, we'll speed it up a little. Damn it. I got we got two in, dude. It was too good. Yeah, no. I so, mean, because the whole because you know, because the the thing about my story is and the thing about most YouTubers is like with the, that beginning part is so hard, but then after it's like, well, how did you get bigger there? It's like, well, I just kept doing it, you know? Okay, I'm actually obsessed with this and I've been wanting to learn more of it because I see the early days. So please tell me about this. Well, I mean, I guess to summarize a little bit. So after the summer of 2018, like uh, I was getting to the point where I either needed to get a job or do YouTube full time. I basically asked my dad like, hey, can I do YouTube full time? And he was like, I guess we'll give it a shot. You know, for a guy, my dad was like, I don't, my dad is the type of guy where he's like, get a job, like get a good, yeah. get a good <laughs> job. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. And, you know, suck it up if you don't like it, basically. But so it was surprising that he was like, I'll let you live in my house and try this. But I explained to him this whole thing. You know, I explained to him basically what we just talked about and was like, this could work. So right after I had that conversation with him, about a month later, I hit a thousand subscribers. And um, then a month later, I was able to monetize. Uh, but that didn't really mean much because you don't make much money on YouTube in the beginning anyway. But yeah, um, right around Thanksgiving, uh, Garden went on his first tour and he did with Oliver Francis. And yeah. He did his second show. And I went to that second show. Um, to meet him and hang out with him. I have that vlogged as well. That's on that's on YouTube. Um, yes. We hit it off. We became friends. Uh, kind of similar to the Convoke situation, I guess. And then it was around Christmas. So a month later, I had randomly FaceTimed him because I just wanted to talk and just see what was up and just, you know, catch up on my, on my friend. And um, he was like, yeah, man, I'm going on this tour. Yada, yada, yada. And I was like, that's so cool. Um, this was the Nash tour. Um, oh. and, uh, basically he with just mall ran rat, right? Yeah. With mall rat and yeah, Carly yeah. Hansen. And, uh, we randomly just, he just dropped it on me. He was just like, I need somebody to go on tour with me. Like, do you want to come? And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, um, I'll pay you a, a hundred bucks a day. And I was like, not bad. I was like, hell yeah, I need a hundred bucks Let's a day go. and I get to travel like, fuck yeah, dude. Of course, that's what I want to do. And then I told my dad and I was so excited. I was like, see, like I knew something would happen. And he was like, fuck yeah, go. He's like, you get to travel Tight. and you get to get paid doing it. Like, duh, of course, go. Yeah. So and that was that was when he proposed that that was like that was two weeks before I flew out. So he was like, I'm going on tour and he was going on tour in a week or, or he was flying out to Cali in, in like a week after that. So I had two weeks to get ready, which didn't really mean much to me then because it was like, all right, sure. I don't have anything else going on. And that's when I went on tour with Garden. And um, that was January of 2019. And uh, one of the best experiences of my life right there. Got to go to the West Coast Whoa. for the first time. Got to see what tour was like and. But when I start went in December, also in December, the YouTube just kind of started picking up naturally. But in December, it took me nine months to get a thousand subscribers. And then in yeah. December, I gained like 5,000 subscribers that entire month. No shit. And then in January, when I went on the tour with Garden, I gained another 5,000 subscribers. So I went from, it took me nine months to hit 1K and then two months to hit 10K. So it was like, dude, like everything was changing all at the same time. Do you, cause like, okay, that moment is the moment we all chase. That moment is the moment that Patrick since day one of music was chasing. Yeah. That compounding, like, oh my God. Like it's working. People are like, holy shit, you know? Do, so do you know like what happened or was it legit just the YouTube gods being like you stayed consistent? Yeah. And it was YouTube. Yeah. Because I made the video, the video that took off was, um, best emo rap songs of 2018 and i think that at that moment emo rap was just at an all-time high juice world was hot peep yeah. always kept his legacy like it was just at an all-time high and i was the guy i was the only guy 
that was covering Whoa. it. I was the only guy. And not only was I covering it, I was friends with all of them. So you could cover it in such an organic way and you had access to show it in, in a way that no one else would. And at that point, I had secured friendships with all of these guys, Garden, Gucci Highwaters, um, you know, Convolk. And they were all growing so much too, like so much. All of those guys, yeah. they were starting to make real money. And um, that was like, uh, you know, that was the the tipping point. All of those things coming together where, uh, you know, it just, that was the video. And then all their videos started going up and then like going up in views. And, you know, then I was like, now's my time. And I started, I think at that point I was posting twice a week. Also, December is one of the best times for growth on YouTube. So that just really? kind of, that was just kind of a little added help fall in general. Um, Whoa. But, uh, but yeah, that's when all of the things came together. And then, uh, yeah, and on top of that, I was just like, now I was on tour with with Garden. And then I had hopped off that tour and got right on tour with Convolk. Um, so, you know, I guess I could go into the tour, but you could you could watch vlogs. You could I vlogged the whole thing. Yeah. I vlogged yeah, the whole better. thing. And, you know, Garden boosted up my clout a lot uh, for yeah. that. So he, shout out to he him. He built something. Like he was on the pod and like hearing him explain his oh story. Oh my god, like, his story is insane. It's insane. It's, it's absolutely so long. insane. You think my story's long? His, dude. He was posting music on Tumblr in like dude. when he was 13. Yeah, he's it's insane. Nuts. He's insane. And and I feel like I have extra respect for him because he's an against all odds story because he came from like a, a community, a city with nothing, yeah. no access. Like he talks about his first times going to shows and meeting some of the other artists we know. And he was a fan. Like it was, there was an amount of just pure talent for him yeah. of like consistency and becoming remarkably good. And then you couldn't ignore it. Yeah, as you can imagine, me and him got really close traveling yeah. the country with each other. It was just him and I um, for a few for a few dates. And then uh, his best friend, Keem, that he grew up with uh, joined. So yeah. uh, it was just us three in a car for uh, two weeks, so. As you can imagine, we, we learned a lot yeah, about each yeah. other. And uh, that's I'll so cool. never fucking, you know, that was one of the, still to this day, one of the best experiences of my life. So thank you to Garden. He knows that. I haven't Dude, talked to him in a while. And he's but. so genuine. Like, just yeah. like to him to do that, like if you could thank him so heartfelt and he would just be like, well, dude, of course, you're yeah, my guy. Yeah, like, it's yeah like, for sure. <laughs> And um, that's so cool. Then so, after, okay, so you're you're picking up that stride. It's all growing. It's all so synergistic, right? Then Convolk does um, Convolk does his tour after that, and um, then I I go on. I get off the Garden tour. Um, I didn't do the whole tour with Garden. I did half of it, and then I flew to Texas to do Convolk's mini tour, which was with Gasp, and yes. um. Who else was on that tour? James Colt, Skylar Allen, Max Taylor, uh, Lucrative. Um, just like a bunch of guys, like a whole different scene that I didn't, I wasn't even I remember, really familiar yeah. with. Yeah, I just, yeah. Keyshore. Um, oh yeah, Keyshore was on that. Yeah, yeah. I had already been friends with Keyshore though. I had met him a, lo a while ago before that. But um, but yeah, the uh, um. I jumped on that tour and then it was back home. After that, it was back home. And I was like, all right, now I have like 15,000 subscribers. This was February of 2019. Um, actually, I won't go into it, but I met my current girlfriend after the Convoke tour and cool. ended up moving um, from New Jersey to Oklahoma to, to live with her. And that's where I okay. am now. Um, okay, I was, yeah. But, you know, it, it shows, like, Convolk, Convolk Tour, again, became a major part of my life. Like, I'm happily with this girl and Convolk in general, you know? Like, it just, it, he's just been such a good um, part of, like, my whole story. And, you know, we're still really good friends. And, uh, yeah, that's after so his tour, cool. I met my girlfriend. Um, and then with that... You move out, and I didn't, so this I didn't is another move there for a while. That's, that's oh, okay. yeah, that's down the road. But basically, I I came back home to Jersey, and you know, uploaded the tour vlogs and everything. And now it was like, okay, you're not on tours. Now it's time to like, I had been for you know a month, a whole month gone 
doing these things. And it was like, now what? Like yeah. when you left for tour, you were 10 times smaller than you were now. And now yeah. you're home. And like, yeah. now what is it? Like, you're still not really making money. I was, I was doing ad revenue and stuff, but it wasn't really that much. And that's when I started doing live streams, listening to people's music. And, um, that's when I jumped on like the industry plant wave and got a lot of views from that. And, uh, oh. that's when like things really started to pick up the live streams too. Like the, when I started the live streams, which for people that are listening that don't know, it's basically people pay me to listen to their music. That's when I was able to make a full living on YouTube. Whoa. And I think uh, that's a common theme, right? It's like you get the traction on YouTube and you get a little bit of money off ad revenue, but then it's up to you to get creative to like where you can yep, really supplement Which is it. where most people yeah. do like merch or brand deals yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. I did the live streams instead of doing those other things. Which then also worked for content for you, right? Or would you upload that? Well, I, what I would do is I would take some, I would, and I still do this to this day, artists that I come across in my live streams, I put them in my videos. Oh, God. Okay, cool. Time. So if somebody, yeah, which is actually really cool. No you, other YouTuber then, does it. Nobody else that does what I, well, Adam22 did it for a little bit, actually, but um, I don't I don't think he does it anymore. Yeah. But that's so cool, right? Because it's like that, that gives somebody such a great reason to pay to have their music on a live stream because it's like, cool, if you really believe in yourself and you're really good, not only are you going to get the feedback, but like that's going to be free exposure. So yeah. It's like a really cool incentive. I love it when, I love it when both people can benefit from somebody making a living of something. You know, I Absolutely. hate the feeling of taking advantage. So that's cool that you were able to do that. All right, so we had a tiny little interruption there, um, but picking back up, you were saying just how you started doing live streams and you were listening to people's music uh, live. Yeah. So basically what I was doing is in order to make a living on YouTube, the ad revenue for those of the people that don't know is very, very low. Um, you know, I was making like $2 for every thousand views and I wasn't getting a lot of thousands of views. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, my ad revenue checks were looking something like two or $300 a month at that point. So that's obviously not enough to make a living. And at this point I, it was March or so I was like, five five months after five or six months after my dad said you can do this and it was like all yeah. right well you're not really like making money so i need to figure Man, this out that's, that's got to be so hard too because you're coming back from tour you feel the traction you know it's growing and i will say even though it's only a couple hundred bucks that's enough to be encouraging mm -hmm. but also at the same time enough to be realistic of like if this is going to be my career this isn't it exactly and even you know, even to this day, the ad revenue is not enough to make yeah. a living. Um, yeah. So anyways, um, I start making, I start doing live streams and I start, uh, you know, asking people pay. Uh, at that point, I think it was like 20 bucks and I'll listen to your song and I'll give real honest feedback, which is how I stood out and how I was yeah. different. Because a lot of the people at the time just listen to the song cool or they gave it a rating out of 10 which is like stupid and then that was <laughs> it and i would like give people feedback and i would be honest and if it was bad i would tell you that it's bad because that's how i am and like how, how is it going to be helpful for, for anyone if i am just like oh like it's good if it's not good you well, know what i mean the other cool thing too is like okay obviously you're trying to make a career out of this but it's always like it feels a little bit whack to you never want to take advantage of somebody or your followers or anything like that. So you always want to give. And I think what you were saying, like, like what you did was you will listen and give feedback, but when something stood out and was actually great, that would then be incorporated into main channel content, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Which is huge. Yeah, and, and um, you know, I would then promote them in my videos where I would do like top 20 underrated songs of the month or whatever and, you know, people who were submitting to the stream were being included into those videos. So there was a I lot of really cool. There was a lot of benefits, you know, but unfortunately, and this is this way that it still is today, there's no guarantees. And if you if your music is bad and you want to submit to the stream and, you know, everybody hates it and I, you know, I just give my feedback, but you're really not going to see much more out of that out of it than that. But it's but it's a gamble. It's kind it's a gamble, but like you, there's also some, 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 there's needs to be some self-awareness yes for you. Yes, I know though. Like, yeah, okay. It's a gamble, but 
honestly, sometimes that's what you need. Like, have you not, in this story that you've told me, have you not had your friends that have been brutally honest with you to say, hey, you need to stop staring at a dead plant. You need to double down on music. Like, I mean, maybe these people don't have a lane to get that. So if it's 20 bucks to hear that they need to get better, like, save them a year of their life. Like, Exactly, yeah, yeah. I get it. Well, the thing is, is like, yeah, a lot of people have have been like, wow, like this really changed my perspective. And I've, bro, this kid posted the other day. He was like a year ago, Patrick CC shat on my song and he said <laughs> this, this and this and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then just yesterday he told me that he really fucked with my song and that it was so good. And I didn't even really remember him, but he remembered that for an entire year. He was like, a year ago, you shit on my song and I was pissed off of you. And then I took what you said into consideration. And a year later, you were like, this is good. Like, I was like, this is good. This is really good in just a year. So, it, you know, it and I really do care. And also the thing that I say in almost all my streams, if you watch, I will tell people after they get, you know, unfortunately slammed by the chat, you know, I'll be like, look save your money. I don't want your money. Like, I don't want you to pay to this stream because like what happens sometimes is people will pay and then everybody will hate it and then they'll pay again. And I'm like, don't like you're, oh. you're, you're going down the wrong path. Like you don't right. need to buy our approval. Just work harder. You know what I mean? Just save your money, yeah. invest it back into your music and work harder. And, um, I think that a lot of people didn't see those intentions and, you know, a lot of people thought that I was bullying or, or I was yeah, just I was going to ask you of, that. Yeah, like because lot, that's hard. It I is think hard. that there's a level right where it's like you're kind of finding your stride, and you're like, okay, cool. Here's a way that I can supplement my income, and my motives are good, and I really don't want to take advantage of these kids. But there's just times where I feel like, as a creator, when you see a path that other people don't see, it can be controversial or it mm-hmm. can be hard. Did you run into that? Yeah, absolutely. I think I was I was uh, really in the beginning I would be slammed almost every single stream somebody would post and it would be out of context and they would cut parts out and I would be and it would really look like I just was laughing at their song and you know there was a there was a there was a rumor or like a thing for a long time where it was like Patrick CC will just make you pay $20 shit on your song and then tell you to quit and it's like that never happened you know there were there's genuine there's still probably people to this day that genuinely think that i have told people to quit making music which is never i never have i always encourage people i always tell people after you know the chat is just brutal and we have been brutally honest i always tell them like don't quit and i built up a community of people that say that shit happened tonight because i live streamed tonight And, you know, there was this kid and it was bad, man. It was such a bad song. And all of the people in the chat were, you know, being honest. And then the kid said in the chat, he was like, dude, just turn it off. Like, I'm embarrassed. And all of the people that were just shitting on his song were saying, don't quit. Like, don't quit. Keep making music. You know what I mean? That's not what we want. We're not trying to bully anybody, but we're just going to be honest. And yeah, in the beginning, people didn't see that time. Like, it doesn't really happen that much anymore. You know, people... People understand, I think, me and what I'm doing. And I've had enough time to really show what it is that I'm trying to do. It's also become a little bit normalized. But Mm -hmm. yeah, in the beginning, it was it was a little rough. And um, but but ultimately, it ended up being the thing, the thing. Yeah, I mean, I'd call that growing pains. Right. And yeah, again, I've been obsessed in this in this conversation with just like hearing how you hit your stride. And I, I admittedly don't know your entire journey. I've seen some of your content, but I wouldn't say that I know like a linear progression, but it definitely feels like you went from covering all the friends that we talked about and being deeply rooted in that scene to evolving past that and and covering a much broader spectrum. Right. So tell me about that. Yeah. So after the, uh, the streams, well, not after, cause they just continued on from there. And then that was like, okay, now I can make a living on YouTube. Oh, so that's a huge piece of your story. Like that, yeah. you doing that and that becoming a part of it was very big. Well, because I did one and it was like, it was successful, you know? And then I was like, okay, well, let me do another one. And then that was good. And then it was like, okay, well, what if I do this twice a week? And like, you know, it didn't go down. And then I was like, well, what if I raise the price? And then that didn't go down either. And then it was like, well, people are just coming back. So, you know, how much? And I, 
I knew that for my own sake, I needed to take breaks, but it ended up being like twice a week thing. And, you know, down the line, eventually it got to be $30 a submission. And that's where it's at still today. I don't want to, I'm doing my best to try not to go above 30 because I don't think that it's, I think that's the right price. Anyways, I started making a living right away pretty much because it was like, yeah. People wanted this. They really liked it. They really liked what was what was happening. And, um, you know, I was able to start making a living. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't insane by any means, but it was enough where I could pay my bills, save money and pay my taxes and, you know, be and eat. Uh, yeah. I was still living with my parents at the time and everything, but I was able to to make a living. Just for the perspective, um, I mean, I, again, obviously, I very much respect not taking advantage of those who support you and give you any kind of money because the fact that people give you anything to support your dream is fucking remarkable. Right. But if you think about like a professional automotive mechanic, a cheap rate is $75 an hour. Yeah. So, like, you're still like you're providing a professional service. Like, you with the years that you've put in, Like, it's not uncommon. Like, think about if you're giving valuable advice and feedback where other people can't get it and it's a chance to get exposure on a YouTube channel. If I'm I'm an artist in that position, like $30 is not shit. So again, I see both sides. I'm not advocating for either side, but I do see both sides. And I think that people should always challenge themselves to look at both sides. Right. And it's funny that you say professional because I think this is where I wanted to allude back to that thing that we had talked about. And it was like, I definitely don't consider myself a professional. I consider myself to always be learning. Um, I think that I have good advice, but I don't think I have the best advice. Um, And, you know, ultimately what I come to is like, it's kind of a dual thing. You're supporting me and my channel, but you're also getting value out of it. So it's a little bit of both. Um, But a lot of people will say that, well, what makes you special? You're just a wannabe this, or why should I care about what you have to say? And, you know, um, the ultimate thing is like, like what we said in the beginning is when you start a YouTube channel, you think that you're interesting. And what happens is you become interesting. That's it. The only reason people pay me for this is because they do. The only reason people care about my opinion is because they do. Like you can't have a, I mean, you can have a professional opinion. Like for example, if you're a doctor and you're getting medical advice, but like, you know, Ultimately, with music or with things that are very heavily opinionated, music, I mean, yeah, there are numbers attached to music, but music is very subjective. You cannot be a professional. The only thing you can do is have enough people that are like, yeah, you're kind of right there. Or like, yeah, I really do like your take on this. And if you get enough people to do that, then yeah, that's that's what makes me special is enough people agree. That's it. The only reason why Joe Rogan is Joe Rogan is because people gave him that power. I mean, yeah, he's Uh, talented, right? But his biggest thing is just he's a guy who is good at talking and he knows a lot of shit. (laughs) Could we not say, though, that 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 comes back to consistency? Could we not say that that starts with you thinking that you're interesting and then believing in that thought slightly enough to keep going and stay consistent because then we could come back to Gladwell. Like Malcolm Gladwell says like 10,000 hours in something to become an expert. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, maybe you don't have a professional degree in something, but you've certainly put 10,000 hours in at this point. Right, yeah. And well, that's what that, you know, I'm sure that could be an entire podcast of dissecting that specific thing. All I'm saying is specifically- you know, you, the only reason you are is because the only reason I am who I am is because people agree or people made it happen. Basically what makes you special? Well, at first I thought I was, and then people made it happen and that's it. You know, that's really the answer. Why do people pay you to listen to music? Because they do. Well, uh, what, are you an expert? And it's like, well, I don't have time to explain to them what we just talked about for an hour and a half. But if I did, then maybe they'd be like, yeah, okay, that's justifiable. But in a quick answer, no. A quick, the short answer is no. I'm just, I guess, I guess people just agree. They just tend to agree or whatever. But you're just, whatever that is, you you start off thinking you're interesting and then you become interesting. And that's really it. And it's just as simple as that, you know? You know, I love that. I, I really love that. That's, that's cool to hear because. I think people can overcomplicate things quite a lot. And again, you're right. That could be an entire podcast discussion. 
But I love that. And I think that that's actually encouraging advice because I think that anybody who's chasing a dream could apply that to themselves. Do I think I'm interesting? Do I think I'm good enough at this? And then at a certain point, the masses say, yep. yeah, I'll watch this. I'll listen to this. Yep. Like, <laughs> Why do people care about Anthony, uh, Anthony Fantano's album review? Because they do. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's literally and I think it. That, that certainly applies to music. How many Absolutely. people are completely self-taught that are amazing, that make the best music? As a consumer, are you like, well, I like this song and the lyrics really hit me, but he didn't go to music school. Right. He isn't classically trained. Like, fuck that. If a yeah. song is good, it's good. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that that's you know, ultimately just the thing that I wanted to allude back to, which is a very interesting take and one of my favorite ones just to, to, you know, well, now when people say, well, why should I pay you? I just say, you don't, you don't have to. You, don't. <laughs> you actually don't have to. Yeah. Don't, you don't have to do anything. You you could just don't, you know, that's, that's yeah. ultimately, you know what it is. But anyway, to, to go back, we kind of went a little bit off there, but you said, I'm glad evolving. we did. That was cool. Um, yeah. so, at this point, March of 2019, um, you know, I just started doing the streams. I started making a little bit of money. Um, I realized that, you know, I, in order for me to grow, I needed to expand beyond just emo rap and covering emo rap and also just covering, you know, the, the friend group and stuff like that. So it's not like I was, I had talked to them about it. Actually, I talked to a couple of people. I talked to Garden. I talked to Convolk and I was like, you know, I know people will be upset, but I need to expand. I need yeah. to talk about other stuff. I need to talk about music broader, more hip, more just broader hip hop. And I, you know, it took me a while. It took me a couple months, but um, it took me actually a few months to really get comfortable with like a new shift. But I started experimenting with different video ideas and different titles and thumbnails and subject matter and stuff. And yeah, eventually, um, I guess long story short came to the moment where I went viral, basically. So what was that? What would you say that was? Um, well, I had a I had so basically I got to the point this time last year, my channel mm -hmm. was at an all time low. So it was basically going up and up since, you know, since I hit a thousand subscribers all the way up until June of that year. Yeah. So from November to June. So what's that like seven months? eight yep. months, roughly something like that. It was just an uphill climb, more subscribers, that's, you know, like just, it was an uphill climb. Like that's what everything was good. Right. And then June, May, June, um, specifically June, I noticed that there was a heavy decline, uh, or not really? decline, not decline, but I had, I had only gained like 1500 subscribers in an entire month, which was really low for me. I was averaging like three, four, five a month. So stagnation, so, like you were just like, something is It different. dropped heavy, yeah, views were down, people didn't seem to be interested, I don't know what it was, right? So no. I stopped focusing on live streams. I was like, you know, this is how I make a living, but I need to make better videos because I knew that the only reason why I had live streams was because I had subscribers and the subscribers don't come from live streams, they come from videos. So I need to make yeah. better videos. That was so your funnel. That was it. And then that month, June of last year, was when I started working on the DMing 100 Rappers video, which was the video that went viral. Oh, uh, yeah, that's your most popular video, yeah? Right, still yeah. to this day. Um, that video I had worked on for an entire month, and I knew that it was I knew that it was a really good idea. I didn't I didn't know that it was millions of views good, but I knew yeah. that it was a really good idea. And um, I you know, was planning on it, uh, doing really well. I also had posted this video. I had made this video that was called bad rap songs with great beats, which ended up doing a million views, but that one did like 20,000 views in the first two weeks. I remember showing it to my friend, John, and I was like, dude, this video is so good. I feel like it's such a good concept. It has a lot of, you know, I just feel like it has the potential to blow up. And, you know, he was like, yeah, but it, in two weeks it did 20,000 views and it just flattened just didn't do any more views. And then randomly, like it was, this was in July now. So July, I was still at this downward, you know, spiral and it was like coming to a halt. And I was like, holy shit, dude, like 
I'm hoping that these videos do well, these upcoming videos that I have. And uh, the Bad Rap Songs with Great Beats video randomly just started going up. It was doing like 20,000 views a day, then like 50,000 views a day. Then it did like 150,000 views like two days in a row out of nowhere. I was actually in Oklahoma. I was on vacation. I was visiting my girlfriend. It was just like, I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Um, like the videos, this video is randomly just picking up speed and I'm getting, you know, a few hundred subscribers a day, which was crazy. And, yeah. um, then I was like, okay, I need to finish that DMing hundred rappers video. Cause I think that one's going to be big. And, uh, you know, there, there were some other things that happened, but basically I knew I had this traction and I knew that I could post this video. I posted it. And it did like 50,000 views in the first 24 hours, which was insane. That's still Yo. that's still really good for me in this channel. And it was like, yeah. whoa. And then just, it, you know, it did like 20,000 views and then like another 20. And then it was like, boom, 100K, boom, 300K, 300K. And it did a million views in like a week. And I was like, what? Like, what is happening? Like, I had 30,000 subscribers at that point. And by the by the end of that month, I I had gained in July. I you know I the month before June I gained eighteen hundred subscribers that month, one thousand eight hundred. Yeah. In July I gained forty thousand subscribers Ugh. in one month. Forty thousand because this video Holy went shit. so viral, dude. It went so viral. So I went from the worst month ever to the best month, but like my whole career changed. Talk about fucking darkness before the light, dude. Like that's gotta be so scary because you build all this momentum, you're feeling good. And then all of a sudden just algorithm gods check you and they're like, no, not this month. Nope. And then like that, that had to have been such a terrifying month and then they be rewarded like that. Holy shit. It was insane, dude. And then I knew... I knew I had to follow that up. So I had posted a few videos in between that did okay and whatever. And, you know, there were there were some there were some videos that did really good after, but I think the the most important part of the story is that I did DMing 100 rappers part two, but I did it a little bit differently. Um yeah. and that video again did kind of the same thing where I had all this momentum from the previous month. They came out like a month separate from each other, but that video was doing so well. The first one, it had like 2.2 yeah. 2 million views or something by the time I posted the second one. And it did yeah. the same thing. It did like a million views in a week. And I went from 30,000 subscribers. I I had took me so long to get 30,000 subscribers to, you know, I went, I went into July with 30,000. Before the end of August, I had 100,000. Oh. <laughs> so in two months, I went from a YouTuber who had some nice traction to like, oh, I'm a people are like knowing about me now. Like I yeah, have a big brand like that's hitting a fucking stride. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I still haven't out outdo those numbers like the views and everything. May just this May was the um, the closest that I've come to that. Um, and that was with what? Uh, I think I did 3 million views in May and like 28,000 subscribers or something like that. May was really was good. Was that month. a specific video or was that compounding? Was that just everything compounding? Uh, kind of a little bit of both. So what's yeah. funny about that, that second DMing 100 rappers, which was the booking price video, that video has brought me so many... <laughs> subscribers and views for such a long period of time so the first one went super viral and then kind of just fell flat the other one has been consistent has done like ten thousand views a day for like an entire year <laughs> or Whoa. it hasn't even been out for a year yet but for month after month it's just been doing steady like it is a timeless video that will continue to grow like it'll just wow. it hits the algorithm it'll like in May, it did one of the days it did 50,000 views in one day. Just cuz. Just cuz. Just randomly. And now, so, like just the other day, it did like 400. <laughs> but like, dude, in a month or two, it'll do like 10,000. You know, like it just it, goes. it's just random. 
so now that you've experienced, I would say several waves of like, the ebb and flow of gaining traction, you know, going from the first couple hundred to thousand and like those like bumps, like those like unexplainable, just, oh my God, I got 5K, I got another 5K Mm -hmm. and like all that. Do you feel like as the creator you are today, do you feel a pressure to like, are you like, okay, how do I create better videos now? Or is it, is it like, what's it feel like? It sucks. I mean, ultimately, (laughs) like it is rewarding, but it sucks because you're like, you're at the mercy of this algorithm that you don't know how it works. So like, I mean, that's just the same thing with music too, is like where for upcoming artists, cause I still consider myself to be very much upcoming. Like, yeah, I have 250,000 subscribers, but you know, you're not an established creator until you have like a million on YouTube really. Yeah. So people still, there's still a ton of people that don't know about me. I mean, even no jumper, I didn't discover yeah. no jumper until they had like 400,000 subs. So Same. like I was so late on that. Yeah. So like there's, you know, to think that I'm like established by any means is no, I need another thing. So it sucks to, but it, but it, I love it. You know, it, it feel, it fuels me to be creative and I'm actually at a standstill right now. It's funny that we're having this conversation because May was the biggest month. So since I went viral, since I moved yeah. to Oklahoma, so basically I went viral in August, July and yeah. August of last year. And then it trickled down, as you can imagine, because you can't keep up with that. And then October, I moved. So I took like a 10-day break because I was moving. And I basically restarted my whole life. Um, And ever since October, it's just been a little bit better than the month before. Like a little bit. And then it started getting a lot better. And then actually, during coronavirus, was the two best months that I've ever had back-to-back. March of this year and April of this year. Um. Just two, two, two back-to-back months that were the best months monetarily that I've ever had. And then May was also a really good month, not necessarily for money, but for views, uh, was the best month that I've ever had. So all the way up until May, it had been just outdoing myself, breaking records after breaking records, you know, big videos, nothing ultra viral, but just consistently doing well. Yeah. And then... Dude, if I could show you, I'll show you a picture of it. You know, in this month in May or in May, I was doing at some point like 200,000 views a day because I posted a video about 6 9 that went big. I did oh, this little, I did see that. did this yeah. TikTok video that did very well. My older viral videos were getting so many views. I was just, I was killing it, dude. And then just, it just dropped. It just went down to, you know, 100k views a day then down to 70k a day then 50k and i was like okay well it's gonna bounce back 30k and now i've been only doing like well i mean it was going down right and then i was like i need i need to make a big change here because i don't know what's happening and ultimately if you just think about it too like people are just they're more concerned with other things totally people have you know there's 40 million americans out of work there's um, people are sick of being stuck inside, you know, for me to sit here and be like, why aren't my videos growing? It's like, think about it, dude, (laughs) just think about it. So that's why I'm not tripping about it. And actually it's, it's, it's been good because I've been able to spend a little bit more time with my girlfriend and, um, I actually have a total, you know, before, before all of this happened, um, I was feeling inspired to make a change in content anyway. And there is a massive, change coming to my content that nobody's expecting um well i was yeah just gonna say on a on a positive light like i don't want to end this on a negative light and i think that um on the more positive light inevitably things will get better yeah we're all in the thick of it right now but it it feels so reminiscent of you explaining last year where you're like you noticed things go down and you're like, okay, I can't just do these live streams. I need to focus on my content. Mm-hmm. And then from where it was the darkest, it got the lightest. So none of us know what happens next. We just know we're in this moment right now where things bigger than us are most important. Right. But if you're already focusing on improving your product again, I am very excited to see what that brings. Yeah, it's it's slight, you know, and, but that's the thing too is that 
the the different the change in content that I did last year to go viral wasn't that big of a change really you yeah. know it i mean obviously i c- i could explain it but if you were a fan of mine it's not like you were shocked and it was like this is so different like you made this different change it was just like i just did something really good so that's the thing is like what i'm about to do you know when the t- when i feel like the time is right um people aren't expecting it but it's nothing that's like uh you know so far where they're going to be like oh this is like I don't even know who you are anymore, Patrick. Like, this is so different. Like, I can't follow this. It's just enough. And I feel like people are really going to like it. It's super different. It's a whole new take on on YouTube. Um, I can confidently say that what I'm doing, nobody has ever done on YouTube, which doesn't necessarily mean that's good. Mm. But it's important to me because I like originality. Um, And it's subtle. And I'm also not going to mention anything about it to anyone. I'm just going to do it and see what happens. I love that. The only person that knows about it is my, my two employees and, um, my girlfriend. That's amazing. That's so, (laughs) so cool. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. And and again, we don't know really the timing of any of this, but I'm so excited. Who knows? You might be listening to this and it's three years later and I became (laughs) super famous off of the thing that I'm hinting at right now. And then I'll be like, yo, we went back to that episode. (laughs) Holy shit. This is crazy. Little piece of history. Yeah. Um, So then I think that, because I really did want to get into with you, because I think a lot of my listeners, I think a lot of people of our generation are just, you'd be dumb not to pay attention to YouTube. And I think a lot of people do think they're interesting and want a platform and I think that you've proven the concept not by theory, but by practical like execution of it. And I'd love to get into some of that. But we also had this incredibly long episode that I loved every second <laughs> of. So maybe we come back to that yeah. and do a follow-up where we talk more specifics and technical things. And maybe even with the change to your your content, you'll have even more insight on it as that grows. We'll definitely so, be able to, uh, like whenever, I'm pretty sure I'm, um, Pretty sure that if we give it, if we give it some time before we do something like that, uh, we'll have uh, this whole new uh, content approach that I'm doing. Um, it'll be I, I I will be able to talk about it. You know that'll be really cool. I'm yeah. very because at much that point it'll be that. public. You know what I mean? Yeah, People yeah, exactly. Kind of pick up. So then for right now, I think the spot to leave it is just where can people find you? If they're just now hearing you, like where do they go look at all of this? Yeah, I mean, I think that if uh, if you're interested, um, you know, there, there's tons of other things that I left out. I, uh, you know, ultimately Patrick CC on YouTube, just type in Patrick space CC. That's the yep. that's the thing to search. And that's the, that's the bread and butter. That's going to be the most important thing. So if you if you. Uh, if you uh, if you like that, then maybe you know other social medias. But ultimately, that's the thing. Uh, but I also have another page called Joda that I never really mentioned to you um, during oh, this that shit. I would like yeah. to talk about eventually. But basically, I have a platform where I post uh, music videos for upcoming artists, and uh, it's a hundred percent free. Uh, it's free to submit and it's free to post and. There's not many other platforms that are like that. The only one that I know of really is a starry. Um, basically, I don't want to I want to I wanted to build a platform for um, upcoming artists to be able to have uh, their music videos posted to a bigger platform, but not have to pay. And Dude. um that's uh that's something that I plan on growing. I'm at 18,000 subscribers with that and uh wow. Every video just does about 1.5 to 2000 views guaranteed. So if you're a nobody, quote unquote, um, you will have probably a thousand to 2000 new ears on your stuff. And that's Dude, a passion and that's, piece. That's real. Yeah. That's a passion piece of mine. And, um, yeah, I'm man. so glad you said that. I'm so glad you brought that up. And let's definitely get into some of that too with the second one. But that's a great yeah. place. Like if anybody is interested, obviously, if you find that yeah, channel, that one you'll is, be able to figure it out. That one, and you could type in J-O-T-A, Joda, create more. So Joda, cool. create more. And um, if you're an upcoming artist, submit your, you'll you'll see how to submit. Submit it. We need music videos. We've been 
lacking on some good ones. That's really cool. Yeah. That, that's that's awesome. And I'm so glad you said that specifically this podcast because a huge amount of my listeners are people in music and looking for channels like that. Yeah, so, absolutely. Very cool. Uh, damn. All right. Well, let's leave it there right now. I would love to have you back as things evolve because I think that'll be a really fun conversation. But dude, thank you so much for sharing this story. And again, like I said, I love these conversations where I have an idea of who you are, but I don't know these pieces because it's so wildly fun to hear the story unfold and find out that there's so many like-minded creatives out there. So yeah. this was such an honor for me to do. I, I really had a great time. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's it's very easy to talk about yourself. <laughs> it's also, <laughs> it's fun, you know, it's fun to reminisce. I love reminiscing. And, uh, it, you know, I love the fact that I'm making history and I'm just continuing to just have fun with it and just do what I do. And hopefully there'll be more long conversations to be had about just, life and hopefully i mean ultimately hopefully somebody finds some enjoyment out of this and or, or somebody finds some something that'll help them that's really i feel yeah I, I mean that's my whole purpose with this podcast is to continue to inspire people to keep going on these paths and what a great story to to have inspire people yeah for so sure. for real thank you yeah man thank you there you go, Patrick CC's story. I really liked it. I feel like he's such a smart dude with so much good insight. I really hope that helped you and inspired you. Certainly did for me. If you made it this far and you did enjoy it, again, please share it on social media. Let your friends know about it. It helps this podcast grow so, so much. If you want to be the biggest homie, leave one of those five-star reviews on Apple. And if you didn't like the episode for any reason and you've made it this far, shoot me a DM on Instagram and let me know what your feedback is. Let me know what I can improve because I really do always want to make this the best possible podcast it can be. I'm at Andrew underscore FTW and Patrick is at Patrick CCTV. Be back next week with another. 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 Be back next week with another.